Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Sunday night nightcap. Tonight's nightcap, I've got the normal mixture of machining, a little bit of plasma cutting, and I think there's a little bit of silver soldering going on. The Stuart Twin engine's coming on very well. Um, it's actually up and running now. There'll be a video up on Monday night, um, which is still sort of three episodes behind what's on the Patreon channel. I did put up a video of a Harrison tool post I've been modifying, part one's up. I'll probably put part two up next week. Once again, the completed series is on the, the Patreon channel. The Patreon channel's going quite well. Um, there's a link in the description box. If you want to have a look, have a look. If you don't want to have a look, <laughs> do and have a look. It's as simple as that. This is a hydraulic pump of some sort of metal torturing machine. And what's happened is the, the mountain lungs have snapped off. They've been snapped off and they've been welded back on a long time ago and snapped off again. To do the job properly, it would mean stripping the pump and building all this up again. It's not really worth it. But what I think we can do is an easy fix is mill that flat in there, and mill that flat in there, and then we can make two plates or a nice fit in there, and the clamping bolts will hold that in place quite nicely. That's what we're going to try and do. So I'm out in the mill and just machine that flat basically. It certainly appears to be cast iron, so it should machine quite nicely. I'm going to machine a spacer so I can mount it onto, a, onto an angle plate. It's just a bit of heavy wall pipe I picked up somewhere. Just for making spacers and things like this, very handy to have. Take that nasty sharp edge off. I actually use the same same tool to square this end up with. as effective as you are too, but did the job. Quite often takes as long to make the, the dish to do the job as it does to do the job. The idea of using the angle plate on here wouldn't work because my angle plate isn't big enough, the stud centre is not big enough. So I can grip that flange there in the vise and I've got a jack on the back. So I can square it up and then put a clamp onto there. And I can use that key to make sure it's line level. So we'll clock in onto that key there, get it line level. And then we can clamp it down and machine that bit out the back of there. We can put a clock on that face going up and down. It doesn't make any difference as long as we get it line level. But I turn round and we've got a nice flat part of shaft. We can use that. I'll put a clamp on the end of here as well just to make sure that we have got a good clip of it. It's part of the fun when you've only got small machines and you're trying to do jobs that are really too big for what you've got. There's always ways and means of fiddling around. It's different if you're doing it for a living, but when I'm just pissing about like this. That's not really a problem. Mm. 
right. Yeah. Substantial bit. You quite often see us using these washers. My friend Bob gets them from work. Uh, the, the bits that stamp out of metal when they're making parts, like the waste parts, they're ideal for packing pieces like this. One more should have it about there. That looks good. We'll clamp onto the solid, solid part of the casting. Right, then we'll have another look and see how our zero is doing. It's gone down a little bit, so I want this end lifting up very slightly. A little bit more, just about there. For that. That's the jack I'm using, it's like a wedge jack. Somebody actually drew that and quite a few of my viewers made them, uh, made a nice job of them as well. It's quite a handy little tool. I bought it at a car boot sale, uh, minus the wedge part, I made me a wedge for it. It's like an apprentice's piece but it, uh, it does the job. Right, back to the task in hand. This is the cutter I'm going to use, it's a solid carbide cutter. It's been chipped, badly abused. I got it given. Um, there's nothing the matter with that face. That face will still work. So it's obviously no good for production work, but that face there will do the job I want it to do. Gonna lock the table off so it can't move. At least it won't move where I don't want it to move. I'm gonna cut from this end so I cut into the direction of rotation. Cutter. It's doing exactly what I wanted to do. And a little bit more, I'll take that right out. So there's no power feed on this axis of the mill, but I couldn't get it in the other way. I think that's going to be the last cut. Yeah, 
we'll leave it at that. So it's going to get quite a, a decent hold on there, the clamping piece. I'll turn it over and do the other one. If you're wondering how I'm getting the it lie level, I'm eyeballing it. Eyeballing a little bit better than guessing. But it doesn't really matter anyway. Right, I'll have to put the clock gauge back in, set all this up. There's a bit of nasty well there, I'll grind that off and then we'll do the same with this side. And we'll take that bit of weld off with a grinder and then we can proceed to machine it. I should have ground it off before I set it up in the middle of the machine, but I didn't. And I'm not taking it back out. Notice there when I was grinding that the sparks at first were very bright, fiery sparks because that had been welded with a nickel rod. And when I got down to the cast, they went to the normal dull cast iron type of sparks. You could weld the plate onto here, onto the steel bit, depending on what sort of seals in there. But I think just clamping on there is going to be sufficient to hold it. <laughs> 